Number 10, Gambit. Now, unlike Cyclops, Wolverine and Gambit can get along and have enjoyed an easygoing friendship at times. So when these two face off, it's oftentimes more along the lines of intense sparring sessions. Like, it's more like, let's see what we each can do. Such as in Uncanny X-Men number 273, where they fought in the danger room before it was a person that Xavier had been keeping trapped after it developed sentience dark stuff. Gambit's not above fighting dirty, which he does here. They're on par, which is already saying something, old man Logan. This is when Gambit realizes that he can make the danger room kinda psych Wolverine out, and he makes it create Lady Deathstrike within it. Now, Wolverine has some pretty complicated feelings about her, and so this leads to Gambit being able to overpower him. Um, well played or dirty pool? You decide. Number 9, Cyclops. The rivalry between Scott and Logan is legendary at this point, and it's not just all about Jean either. Even when she's not there, they still can't get along. She's usually not there because she's temporarily dead. It's fine, it's a thing. The fact that they can't get along has a lot to do with their different base personalities. Scott is not only an authority figure, but someone who leads through opposition a lot, and he could care less if you like him or not. Wolverine responds super poorly to authority and is much more of a let's get this done, not a let's think this to death kind of person. Also a bit of a lone wolf. So they fight, be it verbally or physically, but this fight was actually because Wolverine was being influenced by the villain Sauron. Because of this, he began to hallucinate, seeing his teammates as enemies instead. This led to him tussling with Cyclops. While Wolverine was able to pin Cyclops, Scott was able to blast him off and far away and keep the fight on his own terms. People forget how strong Scott's optic blasts are. They're much more than just pretty lights. Number eight, Beast. That's right, even Dr. Hank McCoy is getting on the action of defeating Wolverine. Though it wasn't by choice, Beast and Wolverine have a pretty good relationship. So this happened while Beast was brainwashed. This occurred in the Here Comes Tomorrow storyline. Beast was taken over by an entity called Sublime. Sublime is a sentient bacterial life form. Sublime finds it difficult to infect mutants, and as a result, there are rumors that he is the cause of the societal hysteria surrounding them. Although, let's be fair, in some cases, it's not hysteria. When Sublime had control of Beast, Beast, it also harnessed the Phoenix Force within him. And so when Logan went to take him on, Beast was able to negate his healing factor, turning him just into a guy with some enhanced reflexes and adamantium skeleton. Which is still a lot of a lot, but not as much as it could be. Beast actually killed him in this encounter, and Jean had to go back in time to ensure the incident never took place in order for him to survive it. Number 7, Storm. Storm can control the weather. She has been worshipped as a god. There's something very wrong with the world if she can't defeat Wolverine. Now, while Storm and Wolverine may at times have a romance that is kind of so out there, at least at first glance, that I love it, this didn't stop her from killing him in X-Men Forever. This was a series that, in a very noirish fashion, opens with a dead Wolverine. He was the shock kill, the gasp at the beginning. Who could kill Wolverine? Well, it turned out that was an evil Storm. That's who. But why, though, you may be asking? Well, keep asking, because the series was cancelled, so the answer was never revealed. Number 6, Kitty Pride aka Shadow Cat. Kitty is a very powerful mutant, but she wasn't always perceived that way. Her depiction has grown over time as people have really come to ponder and appreciate just how truly terrifying a phasing ability is. Kitty taking out Wolverine shouldn't really be much of a shock. In a What If story entitled What If Wolverine Enemy of the State, Kitty would kill Wolverine. In this story, Wolverine had fallen under Hydra control, and he was proving quite the danger killing his former friends and allies. As a result, Kitty ended up engaging with him. Since he was so out of control, she stuck her hand through his head and re-solidified it inside, destroying his brain, and her hand was stuck in his skull since he had chopped it off. And as a result, he couldn't get it out, and he couldn't heal. Ouch, and also gross. Number 5, Apocalypse. Now you would think you wouldn't just try to take on an essentially immortal terrifying, powerful mutant with just your claws. Yeah, you might think that, but you're not Wolverine. Ultimate Wolverine decided to take on Apocalypse, head on. But I mean, a lot of things happen in the Ultimate Universe. Needless to say, it does not go well for Wolverine. Apocalypse is pretty similar between 616 and 1610. Wolverine gets some good hits in, but with Apocalypse's pedigree, healing factor, and other powers, Wolverine gets pretty badly beaten. Number 4, Magneto. We've talked about this many a time here on Top 10 Nerd. Magneto once ripped out Wolverine's Adam Mantian skeleton, just separated it from his body, pulled the metal right out through the skin. While this didn't kill him, it did put him out of commission for a while. This action while gruesome also gave Sama, huh, that actually makes a whole lot of sense. Why hasn't he done that before now? That's 
because he was being nice. Nice guy, Magneto. This action proved to be the breaking point for Charles, who erased Eric's memory using his telepathic powers. Actually, he just erased the whole self as a person. This action would unleash a darkness in Charles, and also unknown to him at the time, merge their two consciousnesses together, eventually creating the being known as Onslaught. Number three. Speaking of Onslaught, here he is. Once the fusion of Charles and Magneto was complete, the world was graced with Onslaught, an event that still has mixed reviews to this day. Well, however you felt about it, Onslaught was for a time described as beyond Omega level. People weren't going up against him one-on-one. -on -one. No, you went in teams, and sometimes team-up teams, like the Avengers and the Fantastic Four. Wolverine against Onslaught, like a fly being swatted. Number two, Proteus. What I'll always remember most about Proteus is Cyclops throwing coffee on Wolverine after. Proteus is the extremely powerful son of Moira McTaggart, too powerful to even boast a conventional physical form. Proteus can bend matter and reality to his will, so the best solution is obviously to take him on head on. Just jump right in there. Both Wolverine and Nightcrawler attempt this, and let's just say it goes horribly, horribly wrong. Proteus just completely unmakes them, warps them, turns them into goo and ooze, and then warps the world around them. Wolverine is incredibly shaken by this encounter, for obvious reasons. Reasons, and it causes Nightcrawler to have a crisis of faith. Cyclops needs Wolverine to fight, so he throws coffee on him. You have to forge your own path as a leader. And number one, Wolverine. No, I don't mean like his demons or something poetic like that. I mean another time-traveling version of himself. Now we've had a couple of versions straight up murder each other for the greater good. Although some would argue it's always for the greater good because one of these was a zombie. It's you just gotta really decide. Play it by ear, basically. In the age of Ultron, which is completely different from the MCU film, no comparison at all, really. Wolverine ended up in a bit of a paradox, leaving the world with two Wolverines at the same time. And that's just one Wolverine too many, so one had to go. Wolverine murdered himself actually more than once in this arc, always from behind. I don't know, just there's something about that. Like, come on, look yourself in the eye. Number 10, experimented on in Ravencroft. At one point, Sabretooth managed to capture Wolverine and handed him over to Nathaniel Essex, aka Mr. Sinister, who tormented him and also used him for experimentation. Wolverine would get out of this one by earning the sympathy of a fellow doctor who it turns out was actually a werewolf. She would help Wolverine to get free, but ultimately end up being caught by Victor Creed and Dr. Essex herself, who would then take her in Logan's place to experiment on. Poor doctor. Logan's time at Ravencroft was so bad that Victor was actually fine with not tormenting Wolverine himself, instead being content with the terrible experiments that Essex had dreamed up for Logan, believing that what he was doing was even worse than anything Victor himself could come up with. You can check out this horror story in the pages of Ruins of Ravencroft, Sabretooth. Number 9. Torn in Half it's important to note that Wolverine made his first appearance in a Hulk comic. As such, it shouldn't be surprising that these two have duked it out on more than one occasion, with Wolverine's healing factor generally being put to the test against Hulk's immense strength. In the Ultimate Universe, Wolverine isn't actually believed to have a healing factor either. More, his powers are believed to be tied to increased chances of survival and kind of evolution. In other words, it's believed that his body actually adapts to the duress it is currently under and finds a way to just, you know, make things work till he can recover. In the case of Ultimate Hulk vs. Wolverine, where Wolverine was torn in half in that first issue by the Ultimate version of the Hulk, in the first few pages, in fact, Ultimate Wolverine then was forced to crawl around, looking for the bottom half of his torso so that he could reattach it. Yeah, a lot more gross than what we might see in the pages of a 616 Wolverine vs. Hulk comic. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want to hear about more crazy stuff that Wolverine has survived, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8, Adamantium Poisoning. What's pretty crazy is that Logan is actually battling this pretty much all the time. The adamantium that is bonded to his skeleton is actually slowly killing him, and the only thing that manages to keep him alive is his healing factor. In the Old Man Logan universe, his healing factor gets weaker with time and eventually he begins to be poisoned to death by his own body. While he does ultimately die, it's pretty crazy to think about just how long he managed to live. And even when Old Man Logan seems to be dying in the Dead Man Logan series, he still finds a way to keep going through a lot of that with the Regenix drug. Of course, it turns out that the side effects of Regenix are also kinda lethal, and eventually Logan does run out of it, using up his last vial. So in the end, old man Logan just decides to give in and succumb to death. Still, he had a pretty insane run. Number 7, Devoured by the Hulk. 
The Old Man Logan universe is much darker than what we're used to, being set in a post apocalyptic future where the villains actually all pretty much won against the heroes and then turned the world into kind of a wasteland. Logan is just trying to get by and no longer goes by Wolverine here. He manages to find some happiness though, settling down with a woman named Maureen and starting a family. Unfortunately, they happen to live on land that ends up in Hulk gang territory. You might think, wait, isn't Hulk a hero? Isn't this a good thing? Not here he isn't a hero and it definitely is not a good thing. The gamma radiation in his old age basically turns Bruce Banner insane. When old man Logan doesn't arrive early enough for the Hulk gang with the rent money that they believe his family owes them, they pretty much kill them all. Well, except for Logan, sadly. As a result, Logan seeks revenge on the Hulk. During their fight, Hulk eats Logan, but in the end, Logan wins, giving Hulk some really, really bad indigestion when he cuts his way out of his gut. Number six, shot in the head. I can give you at least five separate occasions where this has actually happened in the comics, but honestly, there are definitely many more than that, I am sure. At this point, there may have even been too many to count. I could probably make a top 10 list of just the times that this happened by itself. One of the times this happened though was when Wolverine had been possessed by the Muramasa Blade, or the Ebony Blade, while under the guise of Patch. He ended up capturing Jessica Drew, aka Spider Woman, which left Patch's friends to try and recover Jess and save Logan from this evil influence. Lindsay McCabe, Jessica Drew's and Patch's good friend at the time, was the one who ended up forced to shoot Patch in the head. And she seemed pretty confused when Patch managed to mysteriously recover. Cause she could have sworn that, you know, she shot him in the head. Of course, we'd later learn that Patch wasn't really fooling anyone, trying to pretend that he wasn't Wolverine because, you know, all the X-Men were supposed to be dead at that point. So either Lindsay didn't know this yet or was simply playing dumb to help Logan and feel more confident in his disguise. To watch Lindsay wrestle with whether or not to shoot, you can check out the first arc of the 1988 Wolverine series with Lindsay taking said kill shot in issue number three. And I know I wrote 89, but it's actually 88. I always get that confused. 89 is the mini series, even though that's volume one, but it's 89, so 88, but that's volume two. It's a little confusing, is it not? Number five, drowning. While this might not sound that crazy on paper in regards to everything else on this list, for Wolverine it is. It's been heavily suggested throughout history that water is not really where Wolverine is in his element. This has to do with the fact that Wolverine is actually quite heavy with all that added adamantium weight. I believe before he said it's over like 100 pounds of extra weight. He also can't really fully heal from fully drowning. Eventually, it's believed that it would kill him. And he's come pretty close to death by being stuck underwater for prolonged periods of time, which is pretty crazy considering drowning his own son, Dokken, in a puddle was the way that he defeated him when the two were forced to fight one another. One time, Wolverine seemingly drowned during an underwater fight with Tiger Shark when his claws got stuck in a coral reef. Fortunately, we learned in issue 20 of the 1988 Wolverine series that he managed to escape and only suffered from briefly being deaf after escaping the coral and returning to land. Wolverine has also fallen into oceans and washed up on foreign shores a few times and lived to tell that tale, or those tales. Although there are times when that experience seems to mess with his memories as opposed to his hearing. In fact, I'm trying to think of another time that he's drowned and his hearing has been messed up. But I mean, that definitely makes sense if you're deep, deep underwater, because that would mess your hearing up. How come that never comes up again? Does it come up again? I don't know. Let me know if it does. Let me know what issue I need to read where that comes up again, because that would be cool. Number four, steamrolled. So instead of being Rick rolled, he got steamrolled. During a team up with the Punisher gone wrong, Wolverine managed to survive a whole no holds barred fight with Frank Castle. Well, definitely no holds barred from Castle's side anyways. The Punisher shot Wolverine repeatedly with an Uzi, knee capping him as well. And then for good measure, he also decided to just run him over with a steamroller just to really make sure, you know, Wolverine wouldn't be getting up anytime soon. The whole fight is brutal and really only starts because Punisher sees the opportunity to use Wolverine as a weapon. So he kind of like pokes him, pokes him in places where he knows he's gonna start to rage. Which, you know, I mean, Wolverine loves when people do that. He loves when people annoy him so that he can go into a berserker rage and be used as a weapon. That's his favorite thing. The fight all went down during the days of the Marvel Knights in Punisher issue number 17 from his 2001 series, which of course was written by none other than Garth Ennis. Because I mean, 
Come on, this whole fight, it definitely sounds like Ennis. Oh, poor Wolverine. Number three, forced adamantium removal. One of the craziest moments possibly in all of Marvel Comics has to be when Wolverine had his adamantium forcefully removed from his body by Magneto. His adamantium isn't just like a jacket for his skeleton, by the way. It's like literally fully bonded to Wolverine's skeleton and his body. And while Wolverine does have a healing factor, he still feels all the pain of his injuries. All the pain. The healing factor doesn't diminish any of that pain. So I cannot even imagine just how painful this whole experience would have been for Logan. The experience was actually so traumatic that it also seemed to turn Wolverine feral for a good amount of time in the comics. And he even seemed to lose his nose as a casualty. Well, either the loss of the adamantium was what made him feral and made him lose his nose, or the experience did, or some combination thereof. But either way, it was clearly very traumatic for him. Number two, reduced to a skeleton. This all went down in Wolverine's tie-in issues for Civil War. In issue number 43 of the 2003 Wolverine series, Logan squares off with Nitro, the one responsible for killing almost all of the new warriors as well as hundreds of civilians. Nitro's superpower makes him basically a living bomb, and it's this explosive power that he uses on Wolverine. The strength and heat of the explosion is so strong that it reduced Wolverine to just a skeleton. And yet within a few brief moments, I kid you not, Wolverine has almost completely regenerated and somehow healed. With flames still visible, visible, licking at his back, and while he is still smoking from that explosion. That's bananas. Though of course this was the early 2000s, a time when Wolverine was pretty overpowered in the comics due to him being so crazy popular, so this was like peak healing factor times. All he needs is a few pages and he's like, I'm better. I'm like basically fully healed almost. Number one, encased in liquid adamantium. Wolverine did actually die in the comics during the death of Wolverine's story. Sort of. But it ended up, of course, not being permanent, and eventually his corpse disappeared, and then once more, Wolverine showed up again, back alive. However, this was a pretty good attempt at finally burying Wolverine from a writing standpoint. Or I guess, less burying him, more turning his corpse into, like, kind of a morbid... Wolverine Monument. During the death of Wolverine arc, we saw Wolverine's healing factor begin to dissipate and fail him as Wolverine learned that there seemed to be someone who wanted him dead. In truth, it was the head of the Weapon X program who sought Wolverine to try and duplicate his healing factor. He was trying to, you know, do more adamantium bonding. When he learns that Wolverine no longer has his healing factor, the two end up in a fight against one another. As the founder of Weapon X, Dr. Cornelius attempts to escape by activating the adamantium bonding process on three remaining test subjects. Wolverine puts a stop to the process by breaking open the containers. However, this results in him getting covered in molten liquid adamantium, which ultimately encases, hardens, and then suffocates Logan to death. But then of course, Wolverine is later resurrected, regains his healing factor, and ultimately, he returns again. So that's how he's alive now. Yay. Number 10, stabbed too fast. Technically, this killed Wolverine, but in the same issue in which he died, he was right back up and at him again. So I think we can still count it as a survival moment because he recovers. He did come back from it and ultimately he did survive. Also, this death is pretty ridiculous, which is also why I feel like it needs to be mentioned. In issue number 20 of the 2003 Wolverine series during the Enemy of the State story arc, in the same issue in which he was introduced, Gorgon kills Wolverine by stabbing him real fast. He stabs so fast Wolverine's healing factor can't even keep up. Um... Okay. Wolverine dies, but in the same issue is resurrected and returns, now an agent of Hydra. And of course, welcome to Enemy of the State. An iconic story, but one with kind of a weird start. And friends, before I move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more Wolverine lists, boy oh boy do I want to give them to you. In fact, I think we could even do a part three of just ridiculous things that Wolverine has survived. So let us know you love it by giving this video a thumbs up. Number nine, drowning. We talked about Wolverine's battle with Tiger Shark on part one of this list. But later on in that same series, there's also a time when Wolverine slash Patch seems to have been adrift in the ocean for quite some time and washes up later on shore alive. This almost implies that if you take Wolverine out of the water, he could potentially recover from drowning. So you could really only kill him 
by drowning if you kept him under there. Either that or he managed to stay afloat long enough to keep his brain alive before passing out, getting tossed around some more, and then washing up on shore later. So perhaps he's only been passed out for a few minutes. It seems as though he has suffered some brain damage, at least from this underwater journey, as Logan also suffers from amnesia when he first wakes up. It takes a bullet to the head to loosen his memories and make him remember why he came there in the first place. Unfortunately, by then, it's a little too late. His plan was to warn the people of the village he arrived at, but by then, they were already under attack. To read this whole story and the account of his drowning and washing up ashore, you need to check out the Lazarus Project story arc from the 1988 series. Near the end of issue 27 is where he dives into the water, and then we see him wash up without his memory in issue 28. Number 8. Attempted Decapitation There was a time when Wolverine was nearly decapitated by Conan the Barbarian himself, and still managed to keep on walking. His near decapitation broke a sword, and then of course was later covered by his hand on the back of his neck, for censorship reasons I imagine, so you can't quite see it, but it did happen. And this did happen in a what if, so it's considered alternate reality, I should mention, but I still think it's pretty impressive and wild that Wolverine tussled with Conan, got dealt the brunt of his decapitative force, and managed to survive it. And just get back up like it was nothing. Also, I feel like Conan would know when he's pretty much decapitated someone, because I feel like he probably does that a lot, so he literally was like, I gave him the whole decapitation swing and I don't know, he's probably dead. Number seven, weaponized healing factor. When facing the Omegas in the 2010 Uncanny X-Force series in issue 26, Wolverine had his whole healing factor turn against him, being weaponized by Omega Red with Omega Blue and Omega Black in tow the Omegas. Omega Red basically makes it so that Wolverine's immune system is working on overdrive, basically being tricked into thinking that his whole body is like a disease that needs to be fought off. So his immune system starts attacking all his organs, oh no. As a result, he becomes a giant mass of pus, decay, and inflammation. Wolverine's heart struggles against the internal attack, and in the end, his only solution to surviving is to cut himself open and basically let all the infectious bits that are there internally fall out of him. It's quite grotesque, but it does seem to work. And of course, he does survive. Just like him being like, I guess I gotta just cut myself open. I'm like, oh, okay. Alrighty then, gross. Number six, actual decapitation. In Ultimate Wolverine vs. Hulk, issue number five, Wolverine ends up getting full-on decapitated by S.H.I.E.L.D. and Nick Fury. This, of course, is in the Ultimate Universe, as it is an Ultimate comic. So it isn't 616 Wolverine, but it's still Wolverine. Wolverine of 1610, but still. Fury tells Wolverine that they are holding his body in an undisclosed location, and reveals that they ran some experiments on Wolverine's head and body, and have learned that his mutation seems to be more about survival than healing. How is he able to breathe without a body as a decapitated head? Apparently, his head has adapted to use his skin to breathe instead. So Ultimate Wolverine can actually survive decapitation and a slew of other things, just no problemo. He could survive almost anything in the Ultimate Reality. Oh, almost anything. Still dies in that reality, so you know. Number five, escape velocity. We've seen Wolverine able to navigate the vacuum and coldness of space without proper equipment and survive pretty reasonably. But how about a hit so hard that it got him up to escape velocity, blasting him into orbit? Well, surprisingly, that wasn't much of a problem for Wolverine either. We see that happen in issue 108 of the first X-Men volume. Here he runs into a little fella named Jaff. But like Wolverine, just because he might be small or in stature does not mean he is a pushover. Jaff punches Wolverine so hard he launches him up into space, but thanks to his healing factor, he manages to still survive that hard hit. And survive space. I mean, I think it's pretty cool that Wolverine can just survive space. That's nuts. Number four, fall back from space. I like space, so I'm gonna talk about space some more. In Return of Wolverine issue number five, Logan goes up against Persephone. Not wanting to be her puppet and not interested in the seeming fresh start she's offering him after bringing him back from the dead, he decides to escape their conversation and finds out what her master plan is. When he learns it has to do with basically mind controlling potentially the whole planet, he decides to intervene. The last satellite to be removed that could allow Persephone to take control of up to a few million people at the time happens to be the station he is on. So he decides 
decides the best course of action is to also disable that, bringing it crashing down to Earth. Logan himself had just survived being hit with a poisonous gas and jumping out into the vacuum of space. And even after that, he still manages to survive re-entry on a crashing station that would get impossibly hot. Like really hot in there. The station lands in the ocean with Logan literally on fire as he slams into it. As a charred and burnt crisp, he emerges from the water and is fortunately brought to shore by some very shocked but obviously helpful fishermen. Hopefully they did have beer for you, Wolverine. Number three, launched into the sun. During the dawn of X period of the current modern X-Men books, back in issue number four of House of X, Wolverine suffered what would appear to be a very permanent death in the fight against Orcus. A team was assembled to take out the mother mold that Orcus was building up in space, a massive mother mold, before it could be completed and come online. Wolverine was the one to deal that final blow to it. Nightcrawler teleported him to outside the station where the mother mold was docked, sacrificing his own life in the process. It was then up to Logan, who slashed through the dock, freeing the mother mold from the station so that he could launch it into the sun. And of course, him with it. In current X times, though, we have resurrection protocols on our side. Yay, resurrection protocols, which allow fallen mutants to be returned to Krakoa. So while Wolverine did die from this, he was soon returned via resurrection protocols back to life. And for those who are wondering, the returning of his adamantium bonded skeleton each time is actually all thanks to Proteus, which fortunately means it's probably a lot less painful than other adamantium bonding processes that Logan has had to suffer through because Proteus can just be like, I warp reality, now you have adamantium. Of course, he can only do that because that's how Wolverine was before. So we can't just like make adamantium, just to be clear. It's not an adamantium making machine, okay guys? Number two, adamantium bonding process. On part one of this list, we talked about when Wolverine has had the adamantium ripped from his body and namely his skeleton. But how about just getting the adamantium in the first place. The adamantium bonding process is notoriously dangerous and there are many test subjects who have come before and after Logan who simply did not survive it. Now consider that Wolverine hasn't just had the adamantium bonded to his skeleton one time, but actually has had it bonded to him multiple times in his life. Considering how painful and deadly this process is, it's pretty amazing that Wolverine was able to survive this even with his healing factor and that he has been through it more than once in his lifetime. He's also gone through the adamantium bonding process before without even emerging with it bonded to him, rejecting said adamantium. That's multiple big ouches, bub. I can't imagine going through it and then just not even having adamantium at the end of that. That would suck. Number one, burned up by the sun. Yep, the sun death has happened more than once, but the sun is pretty ultimate, so I felt like I had to <laughs> talk about it again. I mean, it is a very permanent way to kill Wolverine when you think about it. In New X-Men issue 148, Wolverine has a moment where he's finally ready to say goodbye to everything. He prepares to throw himself into the sun with Jean Grey's body in tow. This is after Jean and Wolverine cannot find a way out of the trap that they've fallen into and are basically about to be launched into the sun. They do their best to find a way out of this predicament, but but unfortunately, they can't seem to escape and it's just getting hotter and hotter in there. When they both seem resigned to their fate, Logan decides to try and make the experience less painful for Jean by running her through with his claws, because that's what Wolverine does. Then holding her body, he greets the sun as they arrive at their final destination. However, in issue 150 of New X-Men, it's revealed that Wolverine and Jean actually survived this because the Phoenix consciousness was awoken by Jean's death. She actually needed to die in order to tap into the Phoenix Force and resurrect rising from the ashes quite literally. She was able to res Logan again and create and pilot a ship construct in order to bring them back to Earth. So he even survived walking into the sun. That's bananas. Gotta love all those, uh, all those reses. Just saving your butt. Number 10, Omega Red. While Omega Red has also lost to Wolverine in the past, he's also had his fair share of victories against him. Omega Red initially proved almost too powerful to Wolverine, especially when it came to the use of death spores which weakened him. There was a time when Omega Red successfully captured the hero and he only succeeded in surviving by getting help to escape, unfit to take on Omega Red alone. More recently in the comics, Omega Red surfaced wanting to join Krakoa 
Noah, but he was actually revealed to be in league with Dracula, and in fact helped Dracula to get his hands on Wolverine's blood, enabling the villain to walk in the sun. Since then, Omega Red has chosen to portray Dracula being truthful with the mutants and becoming their true ally, but Logan of course still finds it hard to trust him. He doesn't really believe he's the true ally. Perhaps because Wolverine himself remembers all the times that Omega Red has stabbed him in the front and the back and just basically stabbed him all around with his carbonadium tentacles. Number 9, Mysterio. Mysterio in an alternate reality completely defeats Wolverine and in the most horrible way. In the Old Man Logan continuity, Mysterio manipulated Wolverine, getting him to fight against and kill all the X-Men, explaining how this could have happened given all their amazing abilities by claiming that his friends would likely hesitate to take him out. Wolverine at the time thought he was taking on a bunch of supervillains who had invaded the mansion, and Mysterio also claims that Wolverine's ego is kind of to blame for him accepting the illusion. After all, Wolverine believing that he could have possibly taken on all of these supervillains himself all at once does seem pretty arrogant. I gotta say, I kind of agree with Mysterio here. And friends, before we move on to the next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more lists where we get to tell you stories about people kicking other people's butts, I love telling these stories, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8, Sabretooth. Sabretooth has beaten Logan so many times that I've personally lost count. Sometimes it seems as though Victor's sole purpose has been to make Wolverine suffer. Case in point, how it became a tradition for Sabretooth to go and mess up Wolverine once a year on his birthday. Sabretooth has also been the mastermind behind a great deal of psychological plots to mess with Logan, including at one point pitting his son Dokken against him, forcing Wolverine to kill his own son. Wolverine thought this was how it had to be at the time but he would actually later learn that it all happened due to the machinations of Sabretooth. People don't often think about how smart Sabretooth is, but he's pretty crafty. Number 7, Mystique. Mystique is one of those villains you don't want to underestimate because, well, it's really dangerous to do so. Case in point, why do I say case in point so much? Where did, where, who's been saying that to me that I've been putting this in my script? An example being when Wolverine thought he had killed her and would never see her again, only for her to return having been resurrected by the hand to get revenge on Wolverine for killing her. She not only defeated him in a physical sense, but also in a mental sense, using him to get information and also to mess with his head when she posed as Yukio. She really messed with him. But that's Mystique for you. Number 6, Spore. While Spore was an insanely powerful villain who did end up defeated in the end, it wasn't actually Wolverine that did the defeating in this scenario. Though he did fight against Spore, Spore appears in one of the earlier stories in Wolverine Volume 2 and was created by Archie Goodwin and John Byrne. It was an ancient entity who first appeared in issue 21, where we learned that the drug that was being used to increase the strength of Roundhouse at the cost of his sanity was actually a part of that villain and that using that drug was kind of how it infected its victims and was able to move more into the physical world through them. Spore it turned out was an ancient bioweapon created by the Deviants long ago that had laid dormant on planet earth after requiring the strength of a celestial in order to be defeated the first time around. Although Wolverine struggled to defeat this enemy, the possibly mutant healer Sister Salvation managed to use her powers to defeat it, cleansing Spore permanently, but at great cost with her hands and possibly ability to heal becoming dramatically damaged afterwards. But Wolverine couldn't have done that alone. He needed, he needed the Sister Salvation backup for that one. Number 5, Madeline Pryor. Another enemy who Wolverine likely wouldn't stand a chance against is Madeline Pryor. In the What If Inferno issue, we get to see what would happen if Madeline Pryor had won the day and she and Sim basically turn Wolverine into their little pet, unleashing his feral side and making him a complete monster. And I really do mean a complete monster. The hero doesn't even stand a chance against their influence as they help him to give in to the darker side of himself that he's always been working so hard to repress. It's even worse than losing a battle or his life because in this story Wolverine loses his morality and basically his humanity. I think that's worse. Is that worse than death? I think it's worse worse than death. If you like lose entirely who you are. Number 4, Dracula. Dracula is a long-standing villain for the X-Men and Wolverine. As we discussed earlier with Omega Red, the villain recently managed to best Wolverine by concocting a plan to capture him and use his blood to power up himself and his other loyal vampires, forcing Omega to become his undercover agent on Krakoa. Of course, in the end, Omega Red would turn against him, allowing Wolverine and the other mutants to strike back. But during that first story of the new series back in issue 1, Wolverine 
Kraken saw himself pretty heartily defeated at the hands of Dracula. And what made it worse is that he didn't really even understand at the time that he had been playing right into Dracula's hands. Number 3 Magneto Magneto is of course another major supervillain who bested Wolverine. He was the one responsible for transforming him into a feral version of himself, stripping Wolverine of the adamantium that coated his skeleton. This was a huge part of us learning more about Wolverine's abilities and his power set. This is when it was revealed that his claws were actually bone claws and they were themselves coated. We also learned here that he had the capacity to be intensely feral. I mean, we'd always known that Wolverine had a wild side, a feral side, it had been a alluded to in the comics, but we didn't know just how wild Logan could be. Don't worry though, although Wolverine lost all of his adamantium in the fight against Magneto and his nose, Professor X made sure that Magneto paid for what he'd done, and that he could never hurt anyone again by completely cutting off his mind, in essence kind of leaving Magneto still physically alive but brain dead. It should also be noted that Magneto has killed Wolverine many times across multiple different realities and timelines. Number 2 Apocalypse Apocalypse is a villain that Wolverine has faced across many different realities, whether with a team or on his own. In some realities, Wolverine has managed to eventually win the war against Apocalypse, but has also lost battles here and there along the way. In the X Men animated series from the 90s, we see no exception, as Wolverine attempts to take on Apocalypse alongside the X Men. When it's his turn to strike, he completely misses Apocalypse with his claws, who manages to escape along with most of his horsemen. Kind of embarrassing. Number 1 Dark Phoenix While Jean Grey would likely never want to hurt Wolverine, and he has honestly almost killed her on a few occasions across the multiverse, always to her benefit of course usually, to avoid her having to suffer. When Dark Phoenix emerges, it's quickly made apparent just how much stronger this persona and force is in comparison to Wolverine. When the darker side of Phoenix Force makes itself known at one point during Phoenix Endsong, Wolverine doesn't stand a chance against it. In fact, he only survives his fight with the Dark Phoenix because he fits into her plan, with her aiming to use him as bait. It does seem as though he succeeds in weakening the Dark Phoenix, but once again, this seems to all be part of the Phoenix Force's plan, allowing her to take a more active role as she works towards getting what she wants, which she thinks at the time is Cyclops and his unlimited energy source, his optic blasts. But in reality, what Phoenix really wants is to feel whole again and feel loved. What a lovely little moral at the end of that story.